Welcome to a new video by DJ SPRC. We're back with our slash 4x4 VXL. Uh, what I want to show today is basically how to remove your shock tower, your rear one. Uh, it's pretty much the same method for the front run. Front one? Front? Something like that. This one right here. Uh, basically, what you'll need is a 2 mil and a 2.5 on the 4x4. Uh, if you have a two-wheel drive slash uh, non-VXL, you might need a Philip instead. Uh, again, I do have a video on that one. It's similar. But on this one here, one of the first things we'll need to do is remove these two screws here if you have the sway bar kit on yours. Uh, now I don't have enough lightning lights to show you, but these are the two screws right here that we'll need to remove the first ones. And these guys are 2.5. Again, one of the things I do and I try very much is not to dismantle the complete machine A to Z to do something. And the reason I need to remove these two here is just to move it side to side to be able to remove the uh, linkages here for the tow link in the back and be able to access the screw that's right here and there's a bottom one. Now I'm going to try to lift it and hoping the camera wants to focus. Not really, but you'll have a screw right, right here. You'll see it and there's one like on top of here. And there are, they are, they are, they are, I'm talking today, to remove, Oop, wrong screwdriver. If you look middle of your shock tower, go down, you'll see there's two screws right there. I'm not sure if you can see where the screwdriver is, but again, two, to remove from there. And if you have an extension and use your drill, go ahead. A lot easier. I do have one, but I don't have an extension on it. And unfortunately, the uh, bumper is in my way. And I'm trying to remove less screws as possible. Now, if you look where your link is, the screw is just like kind of 35 degrees off of it underneath. You could remove the links right off the bat if you wanted to, you could. I just keep them at the end. At the end. And sometimes they're, they're a little pain to, to remove. And let's do the other side. <clears throat> Almost there. This one is being a little bit stubborn for some reason. There we go. Seriously? I think this screw is like two feet long. There we go. Now, if I go and pull on it, you see my wheels physically moving. The shock towers pull apart. Now, we're going to remove our link. 
And like I was saying, you could do that on the beginning if you wanted to, do your link, or do them at the end. Doesn't really matter. I remove one link. Now, for the one that has the sway bar, you'll notice the shock tower is kind of in the way of the sway bar right now. But that's fine, don't worry about it. You'll be able, once you remove your two shocks, kind of put in the 45 and pry it off. I always try to dismantle the vehicle as less as possible. And the reason I do that is basically <laughs> when it's time to put it back together, there's less things to remember and it goes back to there a lot faster. See, I did not need to unhook the square bar. It just came out completely off in my hands. Now, two more screws on top of here to remove this part of the shock tower. Uh, and then you grab your new one. Could be the aluminum one, could be the RPM version, or even a replacement directly from Traxxas. You grab it. It is keyed here. Just make sure to insert it with your sway bar if you do have it. Insert it back in the hole. Now just to make it a little bit easier on me, I am going to do one of the top ones to put it back. And once you did that, to reassemble everything is directly opposite you just did. <clears throat> now, like I, I was saying, you could go RPM you could go aluminum on the shock tower that's something i do recommend going aluminum or uh rpm now the rpm brand is a uh, harder plastic they do warranty them for life rpm normal wear and tear now here in canada Unfortunately, RPM doesn't want to warranty them anymore. And for what reason, I don't know. Just because maybe we're Canadians, it's, it's, I don't know. But, yeah. Come on. Now you'll notice too, trying to put the uh, links, the rear links, there's multiple holes on the back. That's to give you a different uh, uh, camber. Just try to remember where it was. There's three holes on top, two holes on the bottom. And uh, just remember where they were. The other best piece of advice I can give you is take pictures before you dismantle it or even better look at your manual. Your manual will tell you exactly where it goes. The links are back. Let's do the shocks.
Same thing for the shocks. There's three holes. On mine, they were in the middle. Now, these are not the original shocks. They were changed for the uh, black versions. But they are directly a direct replacement. Now, once your shock is went back in, we only have uh, four more screws to go. Now, I'm not going to bore you guys with the other screws. If you just dismantle yours, you should know exactly where they go. Now, if you guys have any comments or questions, post them below. I'll be gladly to answer you. And don't forget, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.